will be the first to admit it is not often you find answers to life's most existential questions, especially in cable news. Questions like, who are we? Where do we come from? How are we all connected? Uh, but our specialist today is a geneticist whose groundbreaking DNA research provides some new clues into some of those very quandaries, at least when it comes to our physical constitution. Uh, it paints a picture of a deep and interwoven American ancestry in the process. And joining us now is Professor Brian Sykes, uh, human genetics professor at Oxford University and author of DNA USA, a genetic biography uh, of America. What do you, what do you, what, what don't we know that you do know about our genetic history that is most startling, you think? I think I know everything about your genetic history. <laughs> <laughs> so when, but when you look at it, what, what's, what's Not yours you? personally, Dylan. No, well, it, not yet. That can be done with relative ease. I'll give you a cheek, a yeah. ch a cheek swab at the I end. I won't leave with that one. Uh, but when you look at the analysis, what, 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 bore itself out? Well, fundamentally what I was interested in uh, when uh, in looking at America is that here you have a fantastic convergence of three continents uh, from a genetic point of view. I just wanted to see how they mixed up, you know, what it showed about individual origins even within people, how different parts of their genes had come from different places and what they thought about it. What did you find? There's a lot of mixing, but as you would have guessed, but it's not just that uh, you have African Americans and Native Americans, American and uh, European Americans within the uh, within their DNA. You can see traces of almost all, all of those in almost everybody. I, for example, discovered that I have uh, a, a, of, a piece of African DNA. I've got an African ancestor somewhere or other. It helps run my pancreas. So, so was, in a nutshell, we are all everybody, yep, to varying we're all, degrees. We're all everybody. So it's not just the individuals are mix, mixed up in America, but you, you've got that mixture within yourself. And your genes are cooperating with each other, because if they didn't, you'd be dead. <laughs> I, I think I understand from your research that you think that uh, America may have had some European visitors mm. sort of before 1492. It sort of dates back earlier than that. Can you expand on that? Yeah, this is, this is work that uses a very, very good um, indicator of ancestry, which is a, a piece of DNA inherited down the maternal line. Now, when um, Native American ancestry was worked on, I have to say, without, usually without permission from the, uh, from the people involved, which was scandalous, but when that was looked at, there were four groups of people, that, uh, four groups of ancestors that made up the majority of Native Americans. However, in recent years, a fifth group has, has been identified, particularly in tribes that live close to the Great Lakes, the Ojibwe tribe in, in particular. And the matches with the, main, the four main groups of Native Americans are from Siberia and Eastern Asia. But in the Great Lakes, this particular cluster of DNA comes not from Asia. There's no trace of it there, but from Europe. So I think around about the same time, something about 10,000 years ago, there was a small group of people that came from Europe directly over the Atlantic, which was partly frozen then, so it could have got round uh, at the edge of the ice. And I think that's the most likely explanation for what we see in, in a small proportion of, of Native Americans. Okay. Well, we, in American society today, we definitely see there is significant racial sort of uh, grouping off. There, I mean, there's intermarriage between blacks and whites and Asians and whites, but there's that, that's the exception in, in my observation. So I guess how much does it matter how much a, a country like ours sort of intermixes racially? Is it, does it make a big difference? Would we be more the same if there's more Asian and uh, European and African intermarriage, or does that not make a difference very much physically and, and physiologically? Well, you, you're sort of asking the question if, there, if it was totally mixed up, whether yeah. all Americans look identical, well, they wouldn't, they wouldn't. But there's, there's an enormous amount of mixing has already taken place, whether or not it's acknowledged. For example, amongst African Americans, I don't think there are any African Americans that don't have some European ancestry. And talking to my volunteers, I went all around the country getting samples from um, African Americans, uh, uh, European Americans, um, some of them were surprised and thought they didn't have any mm -hmm. European ancestors, but they certainly all do. I mean, I'd be most surprised if I found one that didn't. Amongst European Americans, 
um, particularly in the south, I didn't find any that didn't have some African ancestors as well. So you mean Spain, Italy? No, no, I mean no, okay. south, oh, southern, southern US. US. Okay. US. The southern US. That's uh, yeah. Um, and so all of the, I mean, I didn't, I didn't uh, ask for DNA from hundreds or thousands of people, mm -hmm. but all of the ones I did test, all the volunteers from the South, the European and Americans, had quite substantial sometimes uh, elements of African uh, mm -hmm. DNA. So they had African ancestors. So we go, it's a bit ironic because the one drop yeah. rule, which you probably know about, would have classified them all as slaves. That's sort of everybody in the South would be a slave by yeah. the one yeah. drop rule. But one, one thing I regret I never did manage to find was, uh, was an extreme uh, white supremacist or a member of the Ku Klux Klan because had I tested them and if they were from the South, I'm pretty sure they would have had some African DNA. My next question would have been, because one of the great things about this particular test is you can identify which genes you've got from where. So let's say um, a member of the Ku Klux Klan had a, a, a gene which was controlling his kidneys, for example, from an African ancestor. Would he rather do without his kidneys? <laughs> I think not. But I would love to have asked the question. <laughs> How many people did you sample? I mean, in some ways, uh, it's almost curious to me that we don't see even more of this. Uh, I know that we approach it from the idea of uh, expecting that everyone is sort of genetically somewhat uh, homogeneous, but I would imagine there's a lot of this. Oh, yes. Yeah, there is. I mean, it's probably least noticeable amongst the, um, which again surprised me, amongst the descendants of of early New England settlers. I asked of, uh, for volunteers amongst people whose ancestors arrived before 1650, and I thought, well, I'm hardly going to get any, but I had hundreds and hundreds of volunteers. Um, and f oh, I was expecting, as a geneticist, you tend to have rather a jaundiced view about mating practices, um, I was expecting to find a lot of Native American ancestry there amongst the descendants of the early settlers, but I didn't. I only found it in one instance. A man who knew he had a Mohawk ancestor, I was able to show that that Mohawk ancestor had given him some DNA that was actually controlling his blood group. <laughs> Very quickly, and this is a big question for a short period of time, but if, in fact, most human beings carry the genes for pretty much every race, to some degree or another, which is what you're asserting, that a lot of us carry a wide mixture of a wide variety of racial history, such that genetically we are effectively everybody, even though we look, I look like a, a, a certain, we all have an, an outward appearance, what are the implications for racism if we're all carrying the same gene pool? Well, this would take hours to, to <laughs> even define what racism meant, but it, it demonstrates once again that there's no one-to-one -one biological equivalent of uh, equivalence between race and right. biology. The other long conversation we can't have now as a geneticist is your jaundiced view of uh, male-female relations. <laughs> <laughs> You're a man who knows too much for, for about too many people. Uh, Professor, a pleasure. Congratulations on the book. Um, Check it out. DNA USA, a genetic biography of America.